All right. Situate, Rhode Island. Is that how you say it, Josh? Um, trying to scroll up and read Josh's comment to see if I, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. He said, cool. Nailed it. Situate, uh, Rhode Island. There's a Situate mass as well. Going to Situate, Rhode Island. That's the town of the day. It is 73 degrees and cloudy there. Uh, Situate, Rhode Island, a bunch of people from Situate mass emigrated they left Massachusetts. They went to Rhode Island, and then they just named the town the same thing because creativity was lacking in New England when they came to naming towns. Just so. So lacking. I mean, even in Connecticut, you have Milford, and then you have New Milford. You have Fairfield, and then you have New Fairfield. In the same state. All they did was go up the coast a little bit, and then they just named the town after the same town. Like, come on, get some new names. It ain't hard. Just look at a random person, name it after that person if you want. Anyway, uh, Situate comes from the uh, native Indian word meaning cold brook or cold river. Satwit. 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 The original spelling of the town's name was S-A-T-U-I-T. Uh, all right, we can do, like, the map stuff, but Situate sent me down some real, like, I feel like we I haven't been down any real rabbit holes lately, and this shit sent me down some real rabbit holes. So if you're unfamiliar with the geography of the East Coast, which when I lived in Illinois and when I lived in California, none of my friends knew any of the states on the East Coast, which is fine because they're tiny and small, and why would you? They're, like, counties in California, and you don't expect – Someone from the East Coast to know the counties in California. Anyway, uh, I kind of did the coastline the other day. But I understand people don't watch every single episode, so sometimes i got to repeat myself. How about that? Sports Talk Radio, because they're on for six hours a day, and the average listener listens for 30 minutes. They just repeat themselves. It's crazy. Do you ever listen to, like, uh, sports radio, like a six-hour show or four-hour show from start to finish? Same thing. Like, it's basically watching Sports Center. When you're homesick as a little kid and you're like, yeah, I'm going to watch Sports Center all day. And then you watch it twice and you're like, oh shit, this is the same thing over and over. They're actually replaying it. Same thing. It's crazy. Anyway, maybe that's what I'm doing here. Situate. It's pretty big. I mean, for, for Rhode Island being that big, I feel like that's a big percent of Rhode Island. See what I'm saying? If Rhode Island is yeah okay cool i agree with my initial assessment that it's kind of big buzzards bay is such a cool name all right so there's the reservoir which was huge in this town becoming a big town a mill town i was cooking yesterday meal prepped Got like eight meals ready to go for Katie and I for the week what of it uh instagram storied the whole thing and i as i cook i put a show on TV and I one that I know I don't really care about, but it'll catch my attention. Maybe if not, I don't care. I put the mill. It's an old show by like PBS in 2013, all about uh, child labor in the mill in England, middle England. Well, anyway, this was a mill town. Situates. This was a mill town. And yeah, kind of. this is like the Bay area of towns. Like if you live over here, and you want to hang out with your friend who lives over here, your parents are probably like, nah, they live. That's like that's like San Jose down here and then Oakland up here. It's like you're not going to hang out with that friend. It's too far. It's not a direct route. They do have one bridge. I wonder when this bridge was built. Plainsfield Pike Bridge. Let's drive over the bridge. Oh, shit. Which way was it? Nice and green. Is this the bridge? Oh, found it. Okay, we found it. So here's the reservoir. Pretty big. Pretty big. I don't need to do all this because I have two natural rabbit holes that I went down by myself. One I find interesting. I think maybe you guys will find interesting. The other, 
I don't think is that interesting, but I went down it and I was like, that's kind of the point of the show. Like, even if, you know, if I did it live, I would have went down that rabbit hole. Mr. Pump. What's that, Josh? You ever go to Mr. Pump? Is that just a gas station? Oh. Tough break for Mr. Pump. It's just not there. Oh, a well and drilling con tractor. Maybe he had like a trailer there. He was drilling all the time. Abe said that my meatballs looked awesome. Got them in the fridge today. Sriracha meatballs. Do you Hello Fresh, Jimmy? No, I don't. I don't. I just find recipes and then I bullshit around them. Um, I did like one of those Hello Fresh things for a while, but I didn't enjoy it. I thought I really would. I didn't. All right. So Situate. So I was reading the Wikipedia for Situate Mass, and the top thing it says is in 1791, the U.S. Supreme Court decided its first case, West versus Barnes, regarding a farm. In situ it. So I was like, that's historical. That's cool. I'm going to check out that. But it's kind of boring. Uh, it's kind of boring. The other one's a dentist. Here's Jake. Good oh, morning. Just burp into the mic. Oh, wow. Do you want to burp? No. No. Situ at Mass. Ever been? No, not Mass. Rhode Island. Big reservoir. First U.S. Supreme Court case ever was decided in situate mass. West versus Barnes. This dude, this dude named William West. I'll give you guys the spark notes of it because it's rather boring. William West had a house, and he's paying his mortgage on it. This is what the house looked like. They say it's still up. They wanted to give the U.S. Supreme Court an easy case to be its first. And they they did this one, and the Supreme Court didn't overturn it. It was the first chance where they could overturn the court case uh, of the state, you know, the Supreme Court. They could overturn it. They didn't. They agreed with it. It was kind of bullshit, man. This dude got railroaded. His paying his mortgage and uh, he was a Revolutionary War general. He was a judge, did all this shit. And he he owed a mortgage on his farm from a failed molasses deal to the Jenks. Anyway, so he was paying his mortgage for 20 years. And then at the very end, he, he asked if he could set up a lottery to help him pay off the remainder of his mortgage um, because, you know, he was a Revolutionary War person, gen- well, whatever. It was like, hey, I've done a lot of good in my life. Can you guys help me set up a lottery to pay off the end of this mortgage? Which I don't really get how that works. Everyone chips in, and then there's a winner, and the everyone pays him money, and then he chooses a winner, and then the remainder of the money goes towards his mortgage. Is that like – that's illegal now. Is That that would be pretty fucking badass to be like, everyone give me $2, and I'm going to give a random person 50 – like it's 50-50 raffle, but you just use the proceeds to – Pay your mortgage? Imagine if that was legal all the time. Is that legal? That can't be legal. That's kind of cool. It's like an original GoFundMe, but only one winner. It's just a raffle. I think it's just a raffle. All righty. Anyway, uh, so uh, then he got all the proceeds. But he paid in paper, and I'm guessing paper currency was pretty new, new country and all that, instead of silver or gold. So they were like, this doesn't count. We don't care about paper money. Uh, So then they closed his mortgage, and he had to, like, give up his house. And then he was like, but I paid you. And they're like, yeah, but we don't like like paper. And then then he wanted to defend himself because he was a judge, but he had to go all the way to Philadelphia to do it, and he only had 10 days to do it, and this was the 1790s. So he was like... What? So then the judge ruled against him on a clerical error. It was all about who can sign off for the writing. Dude, it's really boring. So that's kind of it. In the end, they still didn't kick him off his house. He just kept living there, and then he sold it to, like, his nephew, and then it got even more muddied, and then he died. And the house is still there, I guess. Now it looks like this. Or it looked like that. It's just not black and white. I don't know. 
All right. The other rabbit hole. This one was a weird one. And that's all I had oh, to say. Oh, wrong button. Oh, not playing. I'm not. All right, so I was clicking on the Situate Rhode Island Wikipedia, which is how I do this. I went to Notable People, wanted to see if there's anyone, and it says Emerson C. Angel. Angle? Dentist. I was like, how does a dentist get on the Notable People? How does a dentist have his own Wikipedia page? He had to do something pretty cool if he was a dentist. And then it says he invented something to fix a crossbite, right? So if you're the front... Well, this is what he invented. The front teeth overlap the bottom teeth, but the sides of the top were inside. So you're all like uh, rodent mouthed. He invented something to fix that. And I was like, that's crazy. And then I looked up what he invented. And it is, to put it lightly, barbaric. I mean, look at what he invented. So now I'm on this. So this is the rabbit hole. Now I'm on this dentist slideshow for like dentist school. And that's the dude. And basically he was like, if you put, (laughs) if you put a stick in your mouth, if you put this piece of stick in your mouth and then just spin it, one twist every day, eventually your mouth, your teeth will be corrected. I mean, that barbaric is barbaric. It's like right there. You just feel that with your tongue in your mouth. You're just supposed to let that happen. And when they put those blue spacers in my, in between my teeth before braces, I ripped them out with my tongue. So crazy. And then this, this slideshow shows the development of this process then they did this little little spider little spider web thing after that uh this was not accepted by the ortho community um and then hold on then they did this which seems crazy i don't know what that's all about it seems spring loaded uh it's called a la sauce thought named it uh then they did this one so then I was on a rabbit hole last night just looking at the history of fixing crossbites. And that's what this stupid show is. Um, I wonder, like, you know, that initial one, though. Imagine if that dude gave you that. You went to the dentist, and he was like, he was like here, here you go. And then you twist it every night. Just give it a twist, and you'll be good to go. I mean, no way you're not ripping that out. It said uh, Dr. Angel Angle faced much criticism from people in the field of dentistry, which makes sense because he just put like kind of like a torture device in people's mouth, told them to twist. Nuts. All right. That's uh, Situate Mass and the rabbit holes it sent me on. And that's all I have to say about that.